Hi hey guys, this is Max from 3dprinterschool.com. That's actually my new site. Today we're gonna do unboxing of the Voron 2.4 kit from Formbot. This is actually my second time. The reason why I didn't do unboxing the first time, I actually wanted to try it and see if it was recommendable. And I built my first Voron 2.4 printer with it. Now I can recommend it. I think it's a great kit if you're looking to build a Voron 2.4. You could source it yourself, but you might cost you a lot more by the time you do it and it might take you. Plus all the parts are there, all the wiring is there, crimping's there. Or if it's your first time building a 3D printer, I do highly recommend this kit. I got it again because it's simple. Everything works out of the box. It's not a premium kit, they say, but it's affordable. You can build a Voron, it works. You can build a pretty fast Voron with it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Hi guys, so the box is too huge, so I'm gonna go one by one. Um, so you've got, they shipped it really well for the extrusions, uh, foam on top and the bottom. There's no way your extrusion's gonna get damaged. I like that about the Formbot kit. On this corner, you have Bontech extruder uh, gears, authentic Bontech extruder gears. I think they're authentic. I'm pretty sure they're authentic. All right, so that's, that's there, don't lose it. Um, you've got a bunch of F695RS bearings, right? Made in China. Um, you all, I've also ordered with Fetus Dragon High Flow Hot End. So here is the Fetus High Flow Hot End. I'm using Standard Flow right now. I haven't had speed issues, but I wanted to get the High Flow. So I ordered the High Flow. It's a little bit more. I paid $8.99 for this kit with the High Flow. All right, that's actually, I think, the highest option you can get. There are a bunch of pulleys. These are for your Z motor pulleys. Uh, Z, there's four motors in the kit, Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3. The flying gantry is moved up by four motors, and these motors will basically, sorry, pulleys, uh, will be mounted onto those motors and basically control your flying gantry with precision, which is one of the highlights of this printer that you have a flying gantry, the bed stays still. That's pretty cool. Um, you've also got some bed mounts for your bed heater. This will hold your bed. Let's zoom back out and we got a bunch of extrusions. Uh, pretty good extrusions. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, very nicely crafted. Um, I guess you can get some nice Mitsumi extrusions if you want, but they work perfectly fine for me on my first build. And I feel like they have gotten better with the packaging here. Um, you've also got two DIN rails here. So I'm just gonna leave the extrusions in there, but you can see they're, they're nice. And you got a bunch of motors. Uh, I'm just gonna, they're all the same motors except for the extruder motor. Uh, these are Moon's 1.8 degree two amp, two phase step motors. All right, they work fine for me. You can get LDO motors um, if you want more power. Uh, but for my purposes, I just need something that's decent speed. I'm not trying to make the world's fastest Voron. Besides that, when you go that fast, you're not really printing at quality. My whole goal here is to build a Voron um, for example, I have a bunch of Prusas. I print a bunch of multiple objects at the same time. And my top layer is sort of not as good when I'm printing multiple objects. And that's where the Voron comes in, where the input shaper, uh, the pressure advance will help you print multiple objects with slightly or maybe a lot more higher quality. So that's why I got the Voron. So you got seven motors, they have seven main motors. Four of them are gonna be for your Z going up and down. Um, two of them are gonna be for the X and Y. And you got the extruder motor here. You got two phase 1.8 degree, 0 0.8 amps. All right, that's the model. You got a SSR, Omron SSR, that's rated at 24 to 220 volts at 10 amps. So you put the AC on this side and your DC signal is gonna go in here. When the VTT Octopus says, okay, turn on the bed heater, it's gonna send the signal in 24 volts and it's just gonna connect to one of the load, the live line here. So the live, the live will go here and the other output will go to your bed heater. That's pretty much on this layer of stuff. Let me go to the next layer. They come in three different layers. This is the most fun layer, I would say. 
Um, I've actually unboxed it, but my microphone was bad, so I'm actually unboxing the second time. It doesn't actually come like this. It's a little bit more, uh, more, more organized. So you've got a bunch of heat inserts, all the screws you need, all hammer nuts, T-nuts. These are absolutely essential uh, nuts. Everything you need here and some extras. All right, so I'll put that aside. And you've got a filter thingy for your exhaust filter. Uh, but now I do recommend using the Nevermore filter with activated carbon, which I'm gonna install on my printer soon. Um, you've got a bunch of cable ties. All right, zip ties. This is actually my second kit and the first kit actually came with the zip ties that didn't work too well, but hopefully these will work better. Or you can use your own, they don't cost that much. Um, you got this thermal um, 3M tape that works really well. This is for mainly for your door that you're gonna attach. And one thing different from the first kit is you get uh, two foamies. All right, this is for the side panels and bottom panels and whatnot. I think that's for the back panel. This is for the side panel. So this is, it looked very improved. You got a PTFE tube for guiding your filament into the Voron enclosure. Um, you got cable chains for X, Y, and the Z. These were pretty decent. Also, you got three fans that's gonna be used for your controllers on the bottom of the Voron. Now the Voron documentation asks you to use four fans. You can use three. You can go ahead and install another one. I just have two installed on my first one and working fine. This is your hot end fan, I think. All right, 24 volts. They're all 24 volts. And you got your cooling fan, part cooling fan. Works quite okay. You could upgrade it later if you want. Uh, but for printing PET G and TPU, it works fine. Uh, or ABS. Now if you're printing PLA, you may need to upgrade your fan. Um, this knife is actually mine, it fell in there. This is a, a DIN rail mount for your SSR. It's in metal. You got a bunch of pulleys, magnets. I'm not gonna take it out. Uh, there is a Z end stop PCB and uh, X and Y end stop PCB. This is an actual end stop. Whereas my first kit actually shipped without the end stops. It's actually the one without the end stops with the magnets. I forgot what they're called. You got PTFE tubing for your hot end. More gears that you'll need. The hot end heater in here. All right, let's put that aside. You got all the wires you need. One of the things I impress with the Formbot kit when I first installed it on my first one uh, is the wiring. Everything's crimped. You don't have to crimp anything. Uh, there's like maybe one or two wires you have to crimp yourself, but it's pretty much ready to go. And this is why I recommend this kit. It's gonna be easy for you, especially if you're new to electronics, if, if you're new to 3D printers, if you're first time building a Voron, this definitely cuts out all the headaches uh, from electronics, all right? There's enough to worry about. This is absolutely right on. Um, you got an Omron inductive probe. This is probe. My first one was actually a red color, so I don't know what's actually changed, but this is the TL-Q5MC2-Z, 10 to 30 volts, so you can use it on uh, 24 volts. Now you don't need to use a diode like in Boron documentation. So this makes it another simpler uh, application for your first Boron or the first Boron. You got GT, two GT nine millimeter belts. Set that aside. You, you got an AC power cable. Uh, this is for your power supply. All right, this is for e Europe and uh, South Korea where I'm in, in right now. Um, you got a bunch of feet. I had these cone type feet on my first forearm, but now they ship with the circular ones. I don't know if it's better or worse. That's changed. You got two GT belts, six millimeter belts, and you got linear rails. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rails. Um, these are Vivadino rails. They work fine for me on my first kit. Um, they're not the best, I guess, but for decent performance, they work just fine. You're not gonna have quality problems. I don't think so. Um, you got an AC filter. That's uh, slightly different, along with the AC switch, that's different. 
Um, it didn't have this type of filter on my kit that I ordered nine months ago, but this time it's improved. That's nice. Um, you got the Big Tree Tech Octopus V1.1. Big Tree Tech. Let's take a quick look. This is what it looks like. All right, you put your drivers there. Uh, everything looks fine. A note about this, make sure you install the firmware before you install it. That makes everything easier. This kit does not ship with Raspberry Pi. I recommend Raspberry Pi 4B, 3B. I think those are the easiest to get. My last kit shipped with a 3B. Raspberry Pis are getting super expensive. I'm paying average of like almost $100 for a 4B here in South Korea. Okay, you got a Big Tree Tech drivers. No, not drivers, sorry. LCD with the wires. I'm just gonna leave it in there, but it's basically an LCD. You also got a five volt power supply, right? I don't think you absolutely need it. You can actually power your Raspberry Pi straight from the Octopus V1.1, uh, but you can use this also. And you got a Meanwell uh, power supply that is rated for 24 volts, 8.8 amps, plenty of power. Um, make sure to set this to 110 volts or 230. I live in South Korea, so 230 will work just fine for 220 volts here. Set, it, set that aside. Oh, uh, it does come with the sand disks that you can use uh, with your Raspberry Pi. Now you don't need an SD card for the Octopus V1.1. Uh, for the BTT Octopus, you can actually go ahead and just use a USB cable from the Raspberry Pi to flash the clipper firmware, which I'll show you how to do on my YouTube channel here and on my site. You got two 209 drivers here. You should have one, two, three, seven of them with heat sinks. Like that you're gonna go ahead and attach to the Octopus V1.1. What's always confused me is Big Tree Tech decided to name their board Octopus and then you got the Octopus Pi, uh, which is the software that controls. Now, something new with this kid uh, is plastic injection parts given as gifts. So look at all this. Look at all this hot end uh, parts. You got that for, you, you got uh, the, the print fan. Um, this is all inject molded parts. I guess they're high temp. They are actually slightly flexible. This one is actually slightly flexible. Um, it's got heat inserts, which is really nice. So this is a nice addition. Um, so you don't have to print parts for your hot end or extruder. Got some extra parts. And this is to hold your hot end there on the belts. Belts. More cool parts. Boron. This is your cable organizer. Now it's in red, so if you want different color, you may want to print out your parts. All right. Um, so this is actually quite nice that you have some less printing to do if you're printing your own parts. I'll try these new parts here. And guess what? It, it actually ships with Z end stop along with the PCB. So there's a dual, there's an extra Z, Z axis uh, PCB in this kit. This one already comes assembled, which is really nice, All right? Um, so you have also, also none of this was included in the first kit. So this is a good extra. Um, you got exhaust filter, all right, also inject molded, molded plastic inject molded. Uh, some extra parts. Boom, boom, boom. So that's really nice. Um, I think that's for the LCD. That's all for the second layer of the this kit. Okay, the third layer includes a Vivedino 650 watt to 220 volt a bed heater. So in my first kit, the fuse didn't come attached like this, but I believe the fuse is attached here, which is really nice. So that's a, a slight change from the slight change in the latest kit. And you got the PEI sheet for Voron and also magnets. Also you got cast aluminum frame plates. All right, this is machined to 0.1 millimeters. All right, if you wanna get it even more precise, this is where you might wanna uh, custom order, but it works fine. 
I didn't have any problems with bed leveling and printing. The last layer comes with acrylic panels or polycarbonate, I'm not sure. Uh, these are door panels, they're actually transparent. You can take the stickers out, but I'm gonna leave the stickers on. I'll take it out for you a little bit. But they're basically transparent, so you got two doors. Uh, you got the bottom base, all right? This is where you're gonna dip, put DIN rails. This is where all your wires gonna go down to the controllers. Um, this is the back of the printer, this is gonna be the front of the printer. This is in black color, by the way. And this is gonna be for your bottom cover. That's gonna seal your bottom of your printer, all right? Um, this is gonna be back of your printer, all right, back, like, like laterally back. And this is gonna be where your filter exhaust goes and where your PTFE tubing goes for your filaments. And I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Um, I will have full step-by-step -step tutorial guides on my new site, 3dprinterschool.com. That's why I made it. Although Voron documentation is pretty good, uh, there are steps where you can run into trouble or if you don't have background in electronics, you might not understand it correctly. Um, so I'm gonna make a step-by-step -step tutorial written guide along with videos on my new site. So if you wanna see that, subscribe to this new YouTube channel. Have a great day and I'll see you guys on the next one.